When it comes to computers, I'm a, I'm a pretty ones and zeros kind of guy. Regardless of the platform or processor architecture, binary is what I'm used to. Binary is what all of us are used to. Quantum computing, for me, that's black magic funky voodoo. Instead of ones and zeros like a normal computer, quantum computers use something called qubits. And a, it's a data type that can be either a one or a zero, right? Like binary. Well, great, I'm on board. But a qubit can also be a one that has aspects that are kind of sort of like a zero. Or it can be a zero, which is also simultaneously a one at the same time. It's like the they're like it's like the trans ideology of 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 computer technology. It's just it's just utter nonsense. In, in other words, it's black magic funky voodoo. But the number one thing that gives me pause about quantum computing is, and I would wager, the exact same thing that is causing you to not currently be interested in buying a quantum computer. The lack of doom. <laughs> well, buckle up, buttercup, because someone has just ported doom to a quantum computer. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Quandoom. Look at that beautiful thing. For those of you listening to the audio podcast, you got to go check out the article um, or, or watch the video version because the pictures are really glorious. It is it is black and white, more more like vector lines. There's no there's no uh, bitmap raster rendering going on here and everything is all x rayed so you can see through all of the solid surfaces. It's 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 kind of awesome looking. It looks like Doom if it were played on like a Vectrex. You know what I mean? Or or a lot of those attempts at running a, a 3D game, you know, back uh back in the early 8-bit computing era, right? It's very, very vector style looking but it's it's doom it's distinctly doom and it's not exactly a 256 color vga doom but it's still pretty cool right uh now according to the developer there's some pretty significant differences to regular doom namely and i'm just going to quote a few of the bullet lists from the github page here it's only the first level more could be added it's just a matter of mapping them Everything is X-ray due to reversibility shenanigans, okay? No color because it'd make rendering a lot harder and the X-ray would look weirder. <laughs> no music or sound and no level secrets. Although, again, it's just a matter of mapping. All right, all right. Now, I'm going to read this quote from the developer because I think this is fantastic and raises a whole lot of crazy questions. Quote, despite decades of active research, there is yet to be developed a single practical use for quantum computers. This changes today with the release of Quandoom, a port of the first level of Doom designed for a quantum computer given a single chasm file, a quantum assembly is, is, is the language written in, using mere, a mere... 70,000 qubits, a mere 70,000 qubits, remember that, and 80 million gates. Although such a quantum computer doesn't exist right now, that's an understatement, Quandoom is efficiently simulatable on a classical computer capable of running at 10 to 20 frames per second on my laptop using the accompanied lightweight 150 lines of C++ uh, QASM at simulator. Okay, okay, now wait a second. Doom... Quan Doom, right? A simple, simple Doom requires 70,000 qubits. 70,000. How does that exactly compare to the currently available quantum computers? Well, let's. I took a look around to see what quantum computers were currently running and what the current height was. Well, <laughs> The most powerful quantum computer in the world produced by Atom Computing currently handles, hold on to your underpants, roughly 1,000 qubits. That's right. 1,000 qubits is the most powerful quantum computer. 70,000 qubits is what's required to run Doom. In other words, Quandoom requires a quantum computer that is roughly 70 times more powerful than anything that is currently being built at all. Now, currently, it can be run within a simulator because quantum a quantum computer capable of running it doesn't exist. It's not a real thing on both Linux and Mac OS using the simulator, and it gobbles up between five and six gigs of RAM to do it. 
Now, I'm going to read this other quote from the developer because it's great. The circuit needs 72,376 total qubits, 8,376 qubits, not counting the screen, of which 6,986 are ancilla qubits. The circuit file has 83,651,224 lines, so at least that many gates. Actually, it actually will be more since many lines or subroutines. Okay, so that's 83 million or more gates in order to, to make this work. I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, it looks cool. It looks like it looks like if someone were to port, you know, Doom to a, a Commodore 64, right? Uh, except without color or sound. Uh, now, Quan Doom must function differently than regular Doom. Now, here's, here's where it gets interesting, because I don't know, if you're like me, I haven't seen real software, actually real, like, identifiable, like, hey, that's a piece of software I could, like, think about and recognize running on quantum computers, right? So I'm like, well, how does this work? Because quantum computers are friggin' weird. So... Uh, here, how does this work? Let, let's 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 read through what the developer says. The game loop is as follows: one, the user pressing a key sets the value of one of the input qubits. Okay, the QASM file containing all of the quantum gates is applied to the entire state. The last 64,000 qubits are measured and displayed as a 320 by 200 screen of binary pixels. The screen and input cubics are reset and the process repeats. It's weird. It's really weird. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is this is super duper cool. This is very, very cool. Someone got Doom to work on a quantum computer. It's not full Doom, but it's something, right? That's amazing and neat, and I love it. But it's so, so very weird. This also leaves me wondering how far out quantum computers are from being truly useful at all. I, I hate to be that guy, but if you can't run a crazily stripped down version of Doom with no sound and no color, and it doesn't quite work right, and it's just one level, and the and, and like the, the bad guys don't can't even move between rooms. Like it, it's it's the most stripped down version of a Doom clone you could possibly imagine, but still have it kind of look like Doom. If you can't do that on the most powerful quantum computer on Earth. Yet you can easily simulate that quantum computer on a ThinkPad as if you were emulating an old computer system. How useful can quantum computers actually be? I mean, we've got to, we've got to develop a computer that is 70, 70 times as powerful as this one, this one from Atom Computing, right? That it's it's like it looks like the size of Whopper. You remember Whopper from War Games? It just it looks like it looks like someone took like like 10 chest freezers and shove them all together. It's gigantic. It takes up a whole room. And that machine is barely capable of running a, a, a version of a 3D engine that would be not that difficult to build on, an, on a Commodore 64 or an Apple II. Right? I mean... <laughs> Here, I've got, I'm going to go over to the GitHub page. Uh, if you go over to GitHub and search for it, it's just Quandoom. Um, but they have a, a, a video, uh, and a little animated GIF rendering, really, of it running. I'm just going to let that go while we talk here, because it's ridiculous looking. at. I, I love the look of it, because I, I love vector-style 3D engines, so this looks like a ton of fun. But this looks like if someone, if someone were to release this, running on uh, i don't know like like an apple II. i would cover that news and say how awesome it is that they got this running on an apple II, and it's so smoothly um but the fact that, they, that this is running on a computer that would be 70 times more powerful than the most powerful room-sized quantum computer oh man well that that, that, that both sounds awesome for the game, that both makes me truly impressed with this developer, and makes me question 
the usefulness and validity of quantum computing because quantum computing is weird, right? We all can agree quantum computing is weird. Oh, okay, I've got a qubit. Is it a one? I don't know. Is it a zero? I don't know. Is it both? Maybe. Is it a little bit of one, not one of the other, and, and a little bit of this, and also it's a furry panda? B possibly. And, and in order to make increasingly complex pieces of software using a system like that, you need almost exponentially more of those qubits because as as you add data that you're trying to store because you have so much room for errors to be occurring right because you don't have a simple factual binary state you have this little fuzzy wibbly wobbly timey wimey sort of craziness and it's 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 insane it's it, it almost seems like it, like instead of science and math, it's going with magic and wishy thinking. I mean, it's it, 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 it truly is. I mean, I know I know that gets a little political, but I mean, it's it's qubits are the are the trans ideology version of of binary mathematics and computing, right? It takes what was a simple scientific and mathematical thing, a one or a zero, and it turns it into, what is it? Well, it's a little one, it's a little another, and it doesn't really want to be identified as as either, and it has different pronouns, and I'm like, are you, are you kidding me now? This is not... This is not computer engineering and science anymore. This is not even reasonable math anymore. It's just pure insanity, freaky voodoo magic TM. And, and, and the amount of hoops that this developer has to jump through in order to make this kind of sort of almost work so that we can use a quantum computer, that a theoretical, you know, many years in the future quantum computer to do something that would be done better better on uh, a Texas Instruments calculator, um, there are huge, huge amounts of funds being funneled into quantum computing right now. Um, I'm just going to go out and say it that that's probably not going to come to anything truly valuable. I'm sorry. Uh, we've been talking about quantum computing for a very long time, but genuinely thinking about this and looking at what you have to do to accomplish something crazy dog simple that hobbyist developers have been doing in basic since the, since the 80s. Um, yeah. I'm going to say shenanigans to quantum computing. I I'm going to just go out, go out and say that. And you know what? I'll tell you what. I will consider retracting my statement of quantum computing as shenanigans the moment someone can do something interesting with it. Something. Something. Something that looks like software that's running, right? Otherwise, I'm just going to go buy an Apple II clone and have a way more powerful computer. Sorry, quantum people. Uh, and, but to the developer that created this, uh, uh, the developer uh, Lumorti, L-U-M-O-R-T-I over on GitHub, amazing. Uh, really, really good work. You can go grab it and you can run the simulator on a Mac or, Wind or, or Linux machine. It takes about five to six gigs of RAM. Because, you know, that looks like it should take five to six gigs. <laughs> I can do that in 64K. And with that, <laughs> but seriously, the developer did an amazing job. And this took, took a ton of work, clearly, to make it work. Because quantum computers are not designed to run software. With that, uh, go to lunduke.com, lunduke.locals.com. Subscribe and clicky clicky. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare, gosh, that's fun. And broadcast.